Human rights is already not a light topic, but today's video is darker than most. I'm going to talk about the worst international crime that there is, genocide. April is Genocide Awareness Month, and I want to do my role in spreading information of genocides that have occurred throughout time. To start with, what is genocide? Well, we have a legal definition of that thanks to the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide from 1948, or we can just call it the Genocide Convention for short. Genocide is the commission of certain acts done with an intent to destroy a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. What those certain acts are, are killing, causing bodily or mental harm, putting the group in brutal conditions that they could not survive, or the taking away or the disruption of, uh, taking away of children or the disruption of childbirth. Sadly, we have a number of examples of genocide that occurred through the 20th century. Just to name a few, it was the Rwandan genocide, the Bosnian genocide, the Cambodian genocide, Bangladeshi genocide, the Holocaust, the Holodomor, the Armenian genocide, and going back in further history, countless genocides that occurred against indigenous people for hundreds of years. But genocide isn't just a historical novelty. They didn't all occur in the 20th century. The genocide of the Yazidi people by the hands of ISIS is continuing to this very day. There have been some incredible movies that have been made about genocides. You have Hotel Rwanda, which captures the story of a very empowering person who saves hundreds of lives through just ordinary actions uh, taking place during the Rwandan genocide. Then we have Schindler's List, The Granddaddy. One of the best movies that's ever been made tells the story of one man through his ordinary actions saving, again, hundreds of lives. There's a big difference between modern genocides and ones that have occurred throughout history for the last hundreds of years. Uh, to use the term that Lemkin said, uh, genocides require a coordinated plan. Or I'm going to use a little more modern term of that they have to be systematic. To be systematic means that you have to have the state involved. We're not talking about genocides where it's just individuals, random individuals going out and killing, even if there is ethnic conflict. Uh, that wouldn't quite suffice to be a modern genocide. What is needed is that the state needs to be involved to organize and to promote these ideas and to facilitate the genocide to occur. It's effectively impossible to have a modern genocide without state involvement. Now, that gets us to the first modern genocide, the one that really was the cusp of the modern age, and that is the Armenian Genocide. Uh, Raphael Lemkin actually wrote the Genocide Convention due to what he saw in the events of the Armenian Genocide. Lemkin actually coined the term genocide to describe the events that occurred against Armenians. Prior to that, the best term that we had was another term that was coined to describe the situation of Armenians, which is crime against humanity. The Armenian Genocide was the extermination and forced removal of over a million Armenians from what is now present-day Turkey. There was a systematic use of deportations and killings to depopulate Armenians from the land. The brutality that was used against the Armenians demonstrates the intent was to destroy them as a people in that region. Armenians were not the only ones being slaughtered at this time. The death toll included two other cultures as well. So Armenians, about one to one and a half million were killed. Greeks, 450 to 750,000 were killed. And Assyrians, about 150 to 350,000 were killed. Now this channel isn't really a historical channel, so I'm not gonna go into detail about the Armenian Genocide, but uh, please click the card for a great short video that goes and gives you a good understanding of what the events that occurred. Now one thing that sadly is still relevant about the Armenian Genocide and why it still is being talked about is because of this issue called genocide denial. Genocide denial is fundamentally a pretty simple concept. You are denying that a genocide took place. This may seem like nothing special. I mean, denying genocide would be just like denying any other fact, and you could just be disproven, like disproven any other fact, right? The problem with genocides is that they are so messy and complex, and the crimes that are committed are so great, it's often easier to just pretend that nothing happened. And since the genocidaires, the people that caused the genocide, are the ones in power, they're quite happy to go along with that. That might seem shocking or impossible to believe, but I actually have a serious question for you right now. The land you are on, who was on it thousands, hundreds, maybe even tens years ago? Was it your ancestors or was it someone else? And if it is someone else, how did your ancestors come to get that land? Assuming you have a troubling answer, is it easier to accept reality 
or to pretend that nothing happened and to just go on living your life. Genocide denial is considered so vicious and cruel and harmful to the victims and the spirit of what occurred that a number of European countries have actually criminalized the denial of genocide, specifically denial of the Holocaust. While those promoting Holocaust denial are typically on the fringe of society, denial of the Armenian genocide is different because it has a state sponsor. The state of Turkey actively promotes denial of the Armenian genocide. They say that it was World War I, many people died on all sides, and that there was no active, targeted killing and destruction of the Armenian people. This might seem like boring political posturing, but Turkey's anti-recognition campaign is massive and affects everything from textbooks being written on the time to even movies that you might watch. This is The Promise. It is a love story that takes place during the Armenian Genocide. After just three private screenings, you know, with a few hundreds of people, The Promise received over 50,000 votes of one out of 10 on IMDb. These attacks have made it difficult to find a distributor thus making it difficult for just everyday people to learn about the, these events that occurred. Turkey even funded and released its own movie just a few weeks ago to help muddy the waters to promote its own revisionist version of history. So what should we do? Well, as I said at the beginning, this is Genocide Awareness Month. Let's become aware. It's up to us, all of us, to learn about these horrible crimes that occurred in the past to make sure that they never happen again. How? Well, read a book, Check out some of the Wikipedia articles I have in the description, watch one of the older movies that I mentioned, or go watch the movie The Promise. It came out April 21st in North America. Uh, the producers of The Promise actually are donating all proceeds of the movie to human rights organizations. What matters ultimately is that you become aware so that we can make sure that the actual truth continues and is known by everyone, and that these genocide denialists don't win in rewriting history. That's it for today for Inside Human Rights. I hope this darker video didn't put you off too much, but this is part of what human rights work entails. If you're interested in more videos about human rights, please click subscribe.